Okay, this video is meant to serve as an introduction to Grasshopper and data management, and specifically the way Grasshopper manages lists. So let's start out actually by drawing a closed shape in Rhino. So I'm just going to use my control point curve. and I'm going to make it a closed shape. And what I'll do for now is I'm going to copy this vertically and scale it down. So this will be my bottom curve and then I'm going to create a top curve. Okay. What I'm going to do is find I know it's kind of it's you know it's an organic shape. It doesn't really have a center point, but I'm going to create um, what I think is maybe the center of this by using um, just a circle and let's say it's this point here so this is something that I'll have uh, to copy and scale from kind of an origin point so I'm gonna set my C plane to world front and I will copy these two curves vertically from the center of that circle. Okay, and we'll pick it up. I'm looking at the bottom of my screen. I'm seeing a Y of 50 feet. I'll hit escape. And now I'm going to scale that curve using the center of that reference circle. And I'm going to scale it down. 75%, so 0.75. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to set my C plane back to world top. And what I'll do now is I'll bring this bottom curve and this top curve into Grasshopper. And I can do that from my geometry toolbar. If I click on this down arrow, I'm going to choose the curve component and I'll drop that in to the grasshopper window I'm gonna deselect my curves in Rhino by clicking in the gray area I'm gonna right click on that curve and say set one curve or select set one curve and I'm going to select the bottom one and you see it, it's highlighted in green I'm gonna in grasshopper copy and paste that curve right click on it say set one curve and select the top curve so now I have both of those closed shapes in grasshopper the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide those curves into a number of segments and more importantly I'm going to use the points that are created at the beginning and ends of those segments so I'm going to double click and I'm going to type in divide and I'm going to choose divide curve okay and I'm gonna I'm going to end up with two of these so for now I'm gonna plug my first curve in to the C and you see by default it divides it into ten equal segments and that can be found if I if I um, hover my cursor over N you'll see a flyout that says number of segments and then it's 10 by default. I can copy and paste that component and plug in this curve instead. And they're both divided now into 10 equal segments. Now instead of using the default of 10 segments, I'm going to bring out a number slider by double clicking and typing in number and choosing number slider. As you can see by default it's set to decimals and I want to change it to be set to integers. So I double click on the word slider and slider accuracy I change to integer numbers which is the N. And my minimum can be zero, my maximum let's say is 50 and then I can set the value by sliding it back and forth here 
Okay, so let's set that to 15. We'll put this here and we'll let that control. So now you see it's 15 equal segments. And I can copy and paste that number slider and use it for this divide. So we'll divide the top one, let's say, for now, we'll say 8. And we'll leave that one at 15. Okay, so let's start to explain some of the data management and the list management in Grasshopper. So I'm going to double click and type in line. And I'm going to choose the second line, which creates a line between two points. And you'll see there's a, an A and a B. So let's look at some of the outputs that happen in this divide com components. And the top output is a point. So I can plug that into A, and I can plug this point into B, and Grasshopper draws lines. And what we, can, what we notice is that we have a whole bunch of points going to one point on the top curve. So a whole bunch of points along the bottom curve that go to one point on the top. And this is happening because the top curve only has eight points. And the bottom curve has 15 points. So what happens is the remaining points on this bottom curve have nowhere to go but to connect to the last point on the top curve. Uh, you know, what I, I can make this equal, I can take that number of points down to 8 and 8, okay, and we have this situation. If I keep that bottom curve with 15 as it was, and I don't want it to draw a line on the remaining points, the points so from 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, those remaining seven points, let's say I don't want to draw a line, I can change the way Grasshopper organizes the lists. And this was found by right-clicking on the middle of that line component. If I change it to shortest list, you'll see that the bottom curve once it gets to point 8, it no longer on these remaining points draws a line. Okay, let's, let's right click on this line component, change it back to longest list, okay, which is what we had by default. We also have a cross reference, which every point draws a line. So if we look at this bottom curve, every point along the bottom curve will draw a line to every point on the top curve. And also, since it's cross-referenced, same thing. Every point from the top curve will draw a line to the bottom curve. So you get some very interesting geometry with that type of list. For now, I'm going to change it back to longest list, and I'm going to keep the amount of points the same. So we have something like that. As in the previous videos, our final goal will be 3D printing. Right now we have some two-dimensional geometry that we want to turn into three-dimensional geometry. So we're going to do this by using a pipe component. So I'm going to double click and type in pipe. And I'm going to want two different pipe components. Okay, when I click on this line component here, you see it's just my vertical three-dimensional lines. My two-dimensional top and bottom curves are set here and here. So I'm going to have two different pipes. One for, if I plug that in, that'll be pretty obvious to see. So one for these vertical lines. And I will bring out a new number slider because I want this one to be decimal so that I can control my radius a little more accurately. And it only goes from 0 to 1, so I need some more, um, more in this max range. 
So let's say that's going to 5. Okay, so I can control that radius. I will copy and paste the pipe and the number slider. And as I mentioned, I'm going to use this for my top and bottom curve. And since I'm plugging in two components to one input, I need my shift key to be held down. Now something that's important to make this a solid piece of geometry for 3D printing is that my top and bottom radii are bigger than this vertical elements that intersect it. So I'm going to increase this to something that size. Okay. Now, the last thing that I need to do to make sure that this is going to work for 3D printing is the vertical pipes need to be capped. The top and bottom pipes are continuous, so they don't really have a start and an end point. But these vertical ones have a start and an, start and an end. So that's these pipes here. The E input defines the type of cap. You see 0 is none, 1 is flat, and 2 is round. Move this over so that you can see I'm going to right click and choose set integer and I'm going to change that to 1 and I'm going to click commit changes. Okay, so this is our definition and what I want to do is I want to bake this geometry into Rhino and the only two pieces of geometry that I need are the two pipes. So I select both of them using the shift key and there's a bake button sunny side up eggs in my main toolbar and I'm going to click bake selected objects and they show up in Rhino you see the black lines so I'm gonna save my save and close my grasshopper file I've saved it, now I'm going to close it. And I'll minimize Grasshopper. Okay, and let's see if this is going to work for 3D printing. I'll go to a shaded view. And we are going to Boolean Union. So I'm going to, I'm going to hide my curves by typing in SEL, CRV, enter selects all my curves I'm gonna type in hide just to get those out of the way Now I'm gonna select all of my geometry type in boolean and choose boolean union it's thinking and that works okay so I will select that solid piece of geometry I'll type in mesh get a preview Okay. My poly surfaces are still selected, so I can type in hide. Okay, and here is the mesh. Select it, type in check mesh. And this is a good mesh. No naked edges. So this is ready for 3D printing.